Hello everyone, it's Yukiko Amaya and welcome to the Facebook Live, Goddess and Energy Coming Alive. <clears throat> Thank you so much for joining. I am your host. I'm a, a healer, a priestess of Avalon and priestess of Goddess, um, shamanic practitioner and just a very curious human being. And um, I created this Facebook Live series really um, as a way of conversing with some of my friends who are amazing healers and seekers and um, energy weavers. And I just really feel that this conversation is very important right now um, at this time as goddess consciousness is coming alive. I mean, what do I mean by goddess? It's not some, you know, um, figure that is distant and far away. When I speak of goddess, I am, I am really talking about the the divine or the sacred existence of consciousness and um, presence in all life, divine as imminent and um, not only transcendent. So it's really important for me to investigate the sacred as an embodied presence, embodied within me, within you, within nature, within all the different beings, both seen and unseen. So in the worldview that um, I subscribe to, but it's always shifting and changing, um, there is the seen world and the unseen world. In Celtic mysticism, it's this world and the other world. And these worlds coincide and, and correlate. And if we could open ourselves to this amazing um, community of life all around us all the time, then there is, we, we have access to wisdom um, that I feel is not accessible in any other way. So um, today, as I, I hope you have seen some of the, the other guests that have come on, uh, all the recordings are housed on my website. So if you go to mygoddesspath.com and um, go to musings, and under musings, there are blogs and videos. Go to the videos and all of the, the past videos are housed there. And I really encourage you to go and listen. And we are looking into creating this uh, Facebook Live into a podcast so that you can access it and listen to it anywhere um, when you have the time available. Because I really feel that this these conversations are really um, really important as we inquire. We're not talking only about things that we know. We're uh, entering into a conversation of inquiry. So first of all, I welcome you to, um, to put into the comment box uh, where you are listening in from, say hello, and um, please engage with us. It's part of the fun of the Facebook Live. And if there are things that we talk about that um, really resonate with you or that you have an experience that you would like to share, please comment uh, in the comment section of this Facebook Live. Okay, so without further ado, I would like to introduce to you today's guest, Lidi Ometo. So Lidi is a, is a very dear friend and, um, and she is quite an extraordinary human being. She's an experienced uh, yoga teacher. She has the uh, experienced 500 hour 
a registered yoga teacher with the Yoga Alliance. She's a Reiki master and a certified integrative yoga therapist. And she sees yoga as her walk of life, her, her, her passion. And her background is a doctor of physical therapy, massage therapist, acupuncturist. So you can see this wide curiosity here. Energy worker and breath worker informs her classes, trainings, sessions, and ceremonies. Her love of nature and overall divine creation infuses every and each of her sharing. As so she is the founder and director of Inner Sea Yoga teacher training programs, and her yoga knowledge is extensive. She understands the beauty and urgency of embracing yoga and the energetic flows in every aspect of life to enhance overall health and well being. As a wisdom keeper, she leads international yoga and transformational retreats, plus yoga and wellness mentoring programs. And one of the, the programs that um, I was part of was the, uh, the one that she does with wild dolphins. And it's quite an amazing, astounding experience. So without further ado, um, let me welcome Lydie Ometo. Hi, Yukiko. Hi, Hi. Lydie. I'm so honored to be here, so thank you, thank you. Oh, you're so welcome, and thank you for, for jumping in. You know, I, I know that with the things that I do, sometimes it's very um, much uh, improvised, and um, and so thank you for, for agreeing to play with me. <laughs> Absolutely, I couldn't find a uh, uh, best playmate, so. <laughs> So, you know, let's just dive right in because I, I, I wanted to ask you, um, what was your first experience with non-ordinary reality? Whew, yeah, yeah, it's a big one. You start with a big question already. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're going to start out big and then maybe we'll go into particulars. I love it. By the way, before <laughs> I go in there, I love your expansion explanation of the goddess. So thank you so much for that. That was beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it was when I was uh, when I was seven years old. I I talked with uh, dead people, you know, DC. So mm -hmm. I was able to see uh, different levels of um, realms. And so at that early age, I was able to, to connect it to different levels of existence. And in this lifetime, in this world, in this embodiment of my body. And uh, um, so that was from that time that I connected deeper and deeper to what energy is and mm -hmm. what the expansion of this word that it has everything to do with all levels of vibration. So, um, right. yes, yes, that was the moment where the door kind of cracked open and, and has it been expanded since then, so. Wow, and where, where were you geographically um, when this happened? I mean, where were you? Uh, in the world, in this world. <laughs> in this world, exactly. Uh -huh. um, I was in Brazil. I was born uh, and, and raised in Brazil. My, my family is Brazilian, um, half Italian, half French, but hey, I was born in Brazil and wow. I was there at that time. Mm -hmm. And how did your um, family members or parents or other extended family members, how did they react to you being able to see the unseen world? Um, or to connect I was, with? I have been extremely fortunate um, because my family or my parents were very connected to what I call spirituality. Mm -hmm. And um, if we compare a little bit here in the States, it would be similar than the teachings of Edgar Cayce. Um, okay. And so my dad, uh, gosh, way back, as I remember, 
he used to channel through writing. So he would receive the messages from spirit and he would write. He would write with his eyes closed and what they call psychographic um, uh, channeling. And so he was really, it was a, a very familiar uh, universe for him also. So for me, being able to, to see that in such an early age is very interesting, Yukiko, because for me, it was natural. It wasn't anything mm -hmm. different because that's pretty much all that I knew. Wow. You know, that's really fascinating because um, I feel that in a way, most kids um, have this facility and capacity because I do not feel that what we call non-ordinary reality mm -hmm. is non-ordinary. It's, it's um, to many children, it's ordinary reality. It's part of that. And then we get socialized mm -hmm. and, um, you know, um, so that's that's really fascinating and interesting that that was accepted as part of your your language within your family, mm -hmm. and um, you know, and how how fortunate. And I, I'm just so then then that brings me to this curiosity about um, ancestors. You know, do you know whether you this was like this. Um, uh, capacity to see the, un, the you know the unseen or the vibration that is 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 beyond the physical eye um do, do you know if if you have ancestors who are able to 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 do that as well or is that something you yes. know about yeah thank you for the question yes i do especially on my mom's uh, lineage um Again, my, my grandmother, her mother, came straight from France to Brazil. So she is pure French. And as we dove deeper into her background and, um, and way, 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 way back through her and then also through her husband, that was my grandfather, they were both uh, French. And we uh -huh. end up finding out that uh, John of Dark was way 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 back part of that lineage part of that the branches oh, of wow. that tree so uh so in a way um as far as i understand john of dark's life she she lived in the unseen you know that yeah. her power was so connected to the unseen uh that's how she had the major conversations with her guides that gave her so yeah. much power and strength to move forward. So, um, wow. and, uh, and uh, my, uh, my grandmother, uh, my great grandmother also, she um, is really beautiful, Yukiko, because uh, I can see a lot of the resonance with you because she talked with the plants, she was in nature all the time, and she really had this beautiful relationship with, uh, uh, the goddess, as you you share so eloquently in the beginning of your um, your Facebook, as you you open this conversation, and mm. so uh, when I grew up, uh, pretty much everything that we need for a little sore throat or a little runny nose was always in the backyard. You know, wow. always on the plants, on the tinctures, on maybe the trees, or maybe the deeper on the earth. So, um, so yeah. Wow. So this is, you know, that's that's like, it it really makes me um, think of, you know, because of all the goddess studies, and I've been really fascinated with how that has been able to survive the about 4,000, 5,000 years of patriarchy mm. and that of slowly and slowly um, the feminine losing ground and the feminine is so connected with nature, with the, 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 the physical manifestations and how we've come to this point where it's, it's quite denigrated. And, um, you know, when we talk about Joan of Arc, 
um, that the, the 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 fear that the that the um, the powers that be at the time had of people as such, you know, who could actually who didn't need an intermediary to speak with the guides or with the divine and um and the the healing that your great grandmother brought of and your grandmother you know with the plants mm -hmm. and those were the healing not knowings and knowledges that um that came with this territory of really communing and communicating and listening to the plants mm -hmm. so that that there was a respect and um community and communion and, and understanding relationship with um, the other, with the plant world, with the, 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 um, with the souls of these beings yeah. who would then be able to say, no, you need to use this plant for this and that plant for that. Um, and that's, that's an art that I am seeing, you know, it's very hopeful for me because I'm seeing that it's slowly starting to come back. Mm -hmm. the the you know we call it natural naturopathic ways or as compared to the allopathic um the holistic mm -hmm. ways and you know but coming back to the how where we started what happened as you grew older for you as you started to um you know go to school and i don't know if other kids were like really open to hearing you talk with dead people and, <laughs> you know and yeah. what happened to you yourself as from this very open place you know as you traveled into adulthood yes um well um uh, within the time from 7 to 13 i did work uh, with a, a group of uh, a group of people that were supporting uh, the, the disease that were like confused, did not know what was happening. Some of the, the souls mm -hmm. were not sure they, they had disincarnated, but they were, they were lost. So um, at the time I was too young to have the maturity to be able to support them. So I would uh, see guide and, and tell the, the elderly that were able to, to support them and uh, uh, for them to transition and to understand what was happening. Mm. So at the age of 13, teenager years, I couldn't do anymore because it was too much pressure. I definitely mm. could not relate it to my peers. And so at that time, Yukiko, I chose to shut down. And uh, uh, Do you remember, was it a conscious choice or was it more like little by little, you kind of left that realm? I believe that was a combination. Mm. I believe that uh, because it was so hard to relate with my peers and I felt kind of living two different worlds that uh, I feel that part of that was conscious and part of that was just the natural flow at what was necessary for my soul at that time. Right. And uh, right. so I, I felt grateful because then I was able to dive deeper into other aspects of the energy world. Uh, I dove deeper into the flows of yoga. I start yoga at, also at seven to cope with all that, to ground me, to be able to do wow. that work with my, uh, yes, I, I start at seven with my grandmother. And, uh, um, and, and so after 13, I start diving deeper into yoga slowly, slowly, slowly. So in a way I was still with thing that energetic realms of life and uh, wow. and then if i stretch that forward um that was infusing everything that i chose to do professionally in my life connecting to directly with people the embodiment the uh, energy awareness and um and so i feel that there was the opening and then gradually everything expanded, expanded in, in areas that I was able to support people with that easier understanding from their side, if that makes mm. sense. Yeah, yeah. 
can you give us like some examples of of people who come to you with you know and how you are able to help them um you mean now yeah yeah oh, okay um uh, right now the beautiful thing is that i'm also in a major transition in my life into okay. incorporating so much more all these energetic realms. And uh, uh, so for me, I incorporated a lot of the, the energy of yoga, the energy of the unseen through yoga, but unseen through, um, through nature, uh, through uh, gentle ceremonies, through breath work, so uh, through mentoring, so anyone that comes and, and seek for my support, I my main focus, Yukiko, is to support them to remember that uh, they are so powerful and they have so much within them. They can see layers and layers of their existence once they trust in their self, once they trust in their light, and once they choose, they trust in their mm -hmm. choice. So, uh, uh, and, and that I do by supporting them to embody back in their body, supporting them to reconnect to their breath, supporting them to reconnect it to what really brings joy to them, uh, to reconnect it to, to this amazing, using your, uh, your sharing, this amazing world of goddess that, um, that is here to support us, to serve us, and being all living beings. And, and so yeah. I feel that reminding uh, then through, again, through movement, through reconnecting to joy, through breath work, through relaxation, mm -hmm. you know, those are major points that sometimes we go and go through our lives and it's something that not that we forget, we just push aside. Yeah, no, that's really true because, and that's what I was, you know, kind of um, talking about when I spoke about wisdom and um, wisdom, not as a learned <clears throat> text, textual learned thing, but wisdom in terms of experience um, mm. and, um, you know, when I when I connect with the different clients that come to me, um, everybody comes with a different. Um, it's a different construct. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a certain construct of of how they see the world, and um, you know, there was this one young woman who came to me, and she was um, she was convinced that her role um as 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 a as a person was to somehow save her parents mm -hmm. and she was um and she went through a, a pretty huge psychotic breakdown yeah. uh when she was in college that she had to stop going to school and in working with her her agreement to never betray the people that she was supposed to save was so strong that for a while she she we couldn't get there because she there was a wall she she was so loyal that she refused to to talk about why she was hurt you know so we went round and round and um but it was only when after we did a lot of embodiments and also just breathing in love, you know, this cosmic love mm -hmm. that you have just by being alive, that you are loved, that you are held, that you are worthy. And um, which is a very difficult concept for the mind to grasp because the mind always wants to have the reason. Well, if you are worthy, you know, what have you done? Mm -hmm. What have you done that's that's really worthy? You know, are you teaching? Are you giving? Are you all these different parameters? And um, and it was through having her slowly coming come into her body that she finally started to get that 
maybe it was okay to, to say something that she felt was negative about oh. one of her parents. Um, and it, it opened up a completely new way because in a way I find that it's also by coming into your body, you, 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 you start to be given the choice of how you see the world. Yeah. Right. And and part of the, 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 the healing process that, that I see, and I'm really curious to see how you see it, the part of the healing process that I, I see um, that is so really important is to be able to unstick the point of view that we have. We tend to have a very fixed point of view, and the more fixed that point of view is, um, the more suffering it causes. Mm -hmm. Whereas if there is flexibility in the way we can see and understand that each situation that we encounter might not be um, led by iron bound rules, you know, what was right yesterday in a certain situation might not be right today in another situation. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, um, and and that's something that's really fascinating to me. This how do we how do we gain resilience um, and flexibility, not just only physically, but mentally, emotionally. You know, and 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 um, and I know that 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 all of those things also show up in breath. Mm -hmm. Right. So just curious about how how. Um, in the healing work that you do, because you you, you approach it from such a such a, a multiple you know um, vision, which also I think gives one flexibility in in seeing what's really going on. Yeah, thank you so much, Yukiko, for for your sharing. That was so so beautiful and and brought to me um, the expression that, like for example, with the breath. I do use a lot of the, the the gentle breath work that you go into uh, yourself in, in a way of to rescue parts that were hidden or were mm. uh, pushed down, were kind of forgotten. And so to bring it back to process that, it could be, um, it could, sure, it could be some trauma, it could be some, uh, pain and hurt, but also could be joy and exhilaration. Mm -hmm. And so we bring that forward as a way to to process, to remembering, you know, and I love the word remembering because we remember. So for me, we embody back yeah. of yeah, who we yeah, truly yeah. are. So some of those parts, we might have to remember to allow it to let go. We might have to remember to, to shift the perspective towards it. And we might have to remember to bring more forward, to bring more in. Uh, and mm -hmm. one thing that you mentioned uh, that brought me back into nature when you share so eloquently about one of your the, the people that you serve, uh, that uh, that's why one thing that I use a lot is... Uh, the elements of nature and the senses in the body, like using the elements of nature to, to remember that flexibility that we have into the rivers of, of water that we are. It's always flowing. We always going to be changing and transforming. We never going to, I personally, on my own opinion, I don't think that we ever going to reach a particular place because we are always mm -hmm. in transformation. Um, so, and, and then that, that power of the fire, sometimes we gotta be crackling and sizzling. And sometimes we gotta be at the end of the fire, chilling down, you know, and softening yeah. down. And, and so that's why I, I really support my clients and my students to really embody the elements within themselves to, to see and to feel. And, and embody also through the senses, the mm -hmm. eyes, this, the vision, the, the smells, the, the sounds, um, the touch. Uh, because then I feel just like you said, that's that full embodiment. I am here. 
I am in my body. I am this this world. I am part mm -hmm. of nature. I am nature. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. There yeah. is just one more thing that I want to add is that sometimes I feel that we as human beings, we call ourselves the, or how they call it, the crown of creation, right? But truly, All right, the apex, right? The apex. <laughs> and truly, look around. My gosh, mm -hmm. look at the nature, what they teach us in silence, how they support us in the background. They are there holding the space for us to do our dance. You know, and also that they are dancing regardless of whether we are there or not as well. <laughs> You know, exactly. that it's uh, it's because humans tend to be very centric, you know, us, mm -hmm. me centric. Mm -hmm. And um, but I, you know, for those of you, I'm sorry, I, I, I get so caught up with the conversations that I forget to reach out to, to those watching. But if you have different ex experiences of healing, you know, um, through breath, through embodiment, um, through a shift in your awareness or consciousness, um, oh, through just being in nature, which is incredibly healing as well. You know, let us know, um, and um, please, please comment in the box and and uh, and welcome Heather, Heather from Virginia. Yay! Okay, I have a question. Um, it goes back a little bit, Liddy, but you know when you're talking about gentle breath um, to to reach these these um, parts of us that we've we've buried or that has gone into shadow um, and um, and to recover them or to recover them and then release them. Um, how is that? Dung, would you be able to do like a mini? Can you lead us in like a, a little um, example? Or is that is that very difficult to do? Um, well, let me just give an over overview of that first. Uh, sure, that there is like so many different aspects of the breath. Like mm -hmm. for example, through yoga, we connected to pranayama, different uh, different works of the the prana. That's the life force. So we have mm -hmm. many different ways to move the life force within ourselves. That can be gentle. And, and that I will share one really beautiful that will support so much uh, all of us here. But before I go to that pranayama, the, the breath work is different. I have worked with mm -hmm. many different types of breath work. I have worked with breath work that were very intense, very mm -hmm. uh, hyperventilated, and you get like super excited, sure, you, there is also beautiful release of uh, tension and stress, and you can go in deeper levels of your subconscious. Um, but I am uh, I am certified in clarity breath work, and clarity breath work is a little more gentle. So you you what I mean by gentle, you do in a lying down position, and you breathe in through the you breathe in. More a session would be about an hour or an hour and a half that you're breathing in constantly without pause. You just breathe in. And by doing that, you assess parts of yourself that in a normal way you don't because your mind is in the way. When you mention about wisdom, mm -hmm. yeah, because as we know, that knowledge is too much of the mind. Wisdom is when we integrate that knowledge, then is wisdom embodiment of into the body so um <clears throat> once we are breathing right now i'm breathing i'm talking with you but i'm working a lot my mental capabilities now if i'm just focusing the breath i push my mind away and i i, I allow the the my inner intelligence to take over so the messages that i will be receiving or that i will be remembering and that I will be bringing forth, it comes through the power of the breath that's on the uh, on subconscious levels of myself rather than my mind. So that's why I mentioned in that perspective. Um, okay. 
Now, and that would be like about an hour, an hour and a half session that you you are prep prior to the session to be able to allow yourself to move beyond your mind and be centering, connected just with the breath and allow mm -hmm. the emotions to come and flourish through um, um, as they need to or as your soul is asking for, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, with the, the pranayamas, uh, as I mentioned to you, working with the life force, life energy, the prana of the body, there are so many benefits. One of the benefits also is to calm down the mind. Mm -hmm. And in uh, uh, and this particular pranayama that I will, I will share right now, uh, that's, uh, that would be also balancing out the, the sides of ourselves or the opposites of ourselves or the expressions of ourselves as we are the sun and as we are the moon we have the male expression within all of us we have the female expression within all of us and by balancing out a little bit more we are more centering who we are we can dive deeper into our inner knowingness uh, and besides that, uh, we have the sun side that's more activated. We have the moon side that's more calm and nurturing. And by working this particular pranayama uh, that we can do anywhere, anytime, we are balancing out both sides of the body, the sun and the moon. And that uh, would be, I would support everybody to use their right hand and this mm -hmm. using the thumb and the ring finger is a mudra, a hand position. And this particular one is called prana mudra. And is a position that through several um, channels of energy in the body, we can call meridians. In yoga, we would call marma points uh, or nadis. Um, we form this hand position uh, that supports the upper respiratory system so i would close let me see we are in midday for the majority of us watching mm -hmm. this video so i would ask everybody to close the left nostril mm -hmm. and take a deep in breath through the right close the right nostril take a moment take a pause and releasing the left the the thumb i mean the ring finger the left nostril release the air breathing through the left nostril close hold take a pause exhale to the right keep on going just for a couple more times in breath right feeling that you activating your right side, your sun side, take a pause, rejoice within the pause, and release through the left, energizing your moon side, your nurturing side, breathing through the left again, take a pause, exhale to the right. I'm gonna do just one more time both sides, breathing through the right, Close the right, take a gentle pause, exhale left, breathing left, close pause, exhale right, release your hands and take a pause, maybe with the eyes closed or open, just take a pause and feel your body. Feel a certain level of easiness and calmness. Beautiful. And then open your eyes if you have them closed. Mm. Oh, so I love you. this pranayama, Yukiko, because it's something that we can do anytime, anywhere to rebalance, to calm down and, and to be present. And um, as we 
drop a little bit more from the mind into the, the breath, we are dropping closer to the heart. Mm, nice, yes. So thank you for that. Thank you for the alternate nostril. And, yeah. um, you know, it's interesting because with a lot of the, 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 the things that we bring in through yoga, for me, is, is more of a masculine way of being because they um, uh, they create um, and it's 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 again it's not about a good or bad it's it's really fascinating because it's it's a way of there there are different techniques that we can use mm -hmm. to create different states of consciousness mm -hmm. and um, and you know, Nadi Shodana is 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 uh, the alternate nostril is 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 one of them as as can be the ujjayi breathing or um, the, the 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 cooling breath. You know, the mm -hmm. the sitali breathing, all of these things. And I I got to a place where I wanted to drop all technique, mm. and um, because I wanted to know how I could navigate without using any techniques and um it's just it's just me you know i was i was i was um and i do practice yoga it's one of my foundational practices mm -hmm. but one of the things that um that fascinated me that interested me was is the body capable of knowing what it actually needs without any techniques if i soften or open enough can the body actually tell me what I need? Because um, in the natural state, right? So when there is the is the the, the fight or flight response, mm -hmm. the the you know the, the the body reacts, but then stress happens because in the modern day world, the body's constantly reacting as if everything is a dinosaur, you know, that's going to to get us. But um, Another way that I found that was um, quite interesting for me was that just by um, dropping the body weight mm. towards gravity, mm -hmm. um, that the, 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 the breath shifts yeah. on its own. Um, and it's it it comes from from this um, teaching that I received a long time ago when I was in France, and I had this ovarian cyst that I didn't want to go and get operated on, and I was told that without the operation it was going to be very bad, and I needed the operation. But mm -hmm. I found an energy worker who worked with um, with um, magnetic field of energy and she worked with two other people one person was um was an herbal healer who worked with the pendulum again with energy to assess what herbal remedies that i would need and then i worked with um an an osteopath but um but a, you know who used osteopathic pathic manipulations Mm -hmm. And I had never seen an osteopath before. And I remember when I went to lie on his, you know, his table, he just very gently put his hands underneath my shoulder blades. And all I could feel were very light touches. And um, I didn't know what he was doing. But then my body started to move spontaneously. So there was no manipulation. There was no nothing. It was just a very, very gentle touch. And, uh, and I said, what's happening to my body? And he said... <laughs> He said, your body is reacting um, in a really positive way because it's trying to rearrange its cells mm. to move towards wholeness. All I'm doing is giving that, uh, that natural tendency within one's body just a little, a little nudge because given the chance, every single living organism will move towards wholeness. That is the direction. Um, and um, and so that really fascinated me, you know. And 
so it's it's this inquiry of yes you know that the techniques are there available to be used and what i you know it, it was it was yeah it was this curiosity as to how much did i rely on techniques because because i became very fascinated with all of that mm -hmm. so what would happen if i drop them and see where my body stood so th that was an interesting thing to to mm -hmm. to see you know and i'm because again and i want to go back to to not go back but move to this other work that you do with the wild dolphins mm. as a matter of fact is really interesting because i was going there to bring a beautiful point out that mm -hmm. um and 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 thank you so much yukiko for sharing and for bringing that up um with the breath for example the wild dolphins i feel that the dolphins remind us exactly that they remind us of presence they remind mm -hmm. of feeling and connecting to where you are in a space and what you need i feel that the dolphins um and, and including many of many of amazing uh sea animals um as the whales but uh but the dolphins remind us that to be present is life to be mm -hmm. present is the answer to be present then you had the ability to to shift to heal to transform to um to have joy right because right. in the dolphins they uh and i don't know uh, i know that you do know this but i don't know if everybody that's listening uh, know this and thank you so much everybody that's listening but uh the dolphins they have two parts of their brain and for them to sleep they turn it off one part because they are conscious breathers so they need to go to the surface to breathe so they they relax they sleep Part of the shut down part of one brain one side of the brain to rest while they are still connecting to the breath as conscious beings and vice versa when they need to do so um going back to the techniques i agree with you i agree completely with you on that masculine side of yoga uh the only thing i feel for me is at least with my population, many times a student or, or a client, um, sometimes they don't know what they don't know. They don't know how to grasp something. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I love the base of yoga and the techniques to, to introduce what is energy, to introduce, oh, how can mm -hmm. I feel this? How can I play with this? And then, yes, then I don't need this anymore. I can play with the sun, the moon. I can play with the air differently, you mm -hmm. know, because then I know right now I can grasp, I, I understand. Yeah, I can see like the fish. I can, Now I can see the water. Yeah. Right, so I right. love that. And I feel that the dolphins uh, remind us exactly that, that that sense of presence, that sense of um, relying in their innate capabilities, and at the same time, connected to, to the capabilities of the community. Because dolphins are very communal, they live in communities, they live in pods, and they support each other in pods as I was having a conversation yesterday with someone about the dolphins, and we were talking about the generations of a dolphins, like from uh, uh, the, the phases of a female, for example, from a maiden to a mother, to an enchantress and to a crone. And we can see that in the dolphins. Mm -hmm. And they're all there supporting each other in a pod of those generations. So I feel that 
as the dolphins and as natures keep on teaching us and keep on remind us that we do have the capability to transform ourselves. We do have the capability to heal ourselves um, as long as we choose. Yeah, yeah, that's really true. And that choice perhaps is the thing that opens the um, the gateway because part of the, the illness of our, the, you know, of, of the 21st century is isolation, mm. I feel. And, um, yeah. you know, isolation, um, not only from each other, but also from, from nature, from all life that surrounds us, which means that we are isolated from ourselves. Mm. We are separated from um, this amazing capacity of connection that mm. is innate in all of us, you know, and it brings us back to the, the, the very beginning of as a kid that you are able to, to see. And I feel that many children have that capacity mm -hmm. and we talk with flowers and plants and different mm -hmm. things like it was normal, you know, and those of you listening, if you were as a, as a child, you know, had imaginary friends or just really felt that you were connected with everything just you know let us know because yeah. that's something that that um in order to be a pod in order to enter community um i feel that one of the the really important things is is that we also need to open ourselves to our, our inner community and that it's it it wo works both ways. There's a there's a, a, a mirroring of mm -hmm. of of that, and um, you know it's um, and there's so many beings around us who want to help. Like with the dolphins, I remember when we were swimming with the dolphins. Well, you were swimming like a dolphin. <laughs> People, she when she's in the ocean, it's it's amazing. Lydia is like is like part fish, okay, and um, and and she even put on a dolphin tail. I uh, know a mermaid tail dress. <laughs> and the, I you know that knowing it's sort of like the trees as land creatures they 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 are completely interwoven with each other mm -hmm. um and and that that might be part of the healing i was just thinking about this as you were talking that the dolphins bring there's so much joy that they bring you know just to be close to them regardless of anything you know or don't know it just brings this huge grin on your face Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's just, they open and ignite in us this, this place of fun and joy and wonder and delight. Mm. Um, it was amazing to be swimming when the boat was pulling us and we were on the rope. Yes, and the I dolphins were finally like, finally, <laughs> you people can move at speed so that we don't have to kind of, you know, and they were swimming with us. And it was the most delightful, delightful feeling, you know, that yeah. kind of joy that they can bring is amazing. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, uh, it's almost hard to translate in words. It, it yeah. really is. And, and I feel that that's something for us to constantly remember that it yeah. is we can walk outside and have joy in sitting by the grass and touch your feet in the dirt in in smelling a flower or in embrace someone or we can find joy indoors by washing your hands under the water faucet and being grateful that you got water you know so i know so because you lived for a while without water two and a half years <laughs> So, wow. uh, yeah. Yeah. So the simple, the simple joys uh, that again is go uh, goes all back into choice. Do I choose yeah. to see joy, or do I choose to ignore? 
Yeah, yeah, and 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 in that choice, choice denotes a certain amount of freedom already, a certain amount mm -hmm. of um, spaciousness, and oftentimes that spaciousness. Um, becomes lost when we are really tightening in our head and then we feel like there's no place to turn and and when we actually when we can drop out from one of my soul motion uh, mentors and teachers Vincent Martinez used to say come down from the tower of your thoughts you know <laughs> into yes. the sanctuary of your body because yes. then spaciousness is actually there you know, mm. you know? And I, I think people, if um, if you are you know interested in all the things that Liddy is doing, please visit her at liddyometto.com. Um, I think you uh, you're going on the, this. Is is it completely full? Your dolphin yoga retreat? Yes, I'm leaving this Sunday. Oh wow! A oh wow! Days, okay. So okay, we are super excited to to be oh, there next great. week. I, I will be there for sure, and um, and that's that's super exciting. But yes, anybody can get connected to me at the website. As a matter of fact, I will be offering um, a breath work online coming up. I believe that's the twenty four. I cannot recall quite well the date, but it's on the website, and. Uh, uh, and there are several other offerings coming up and I keep uh, updating the website quite often. But if there is any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. I will love to talk. As you see, I love to talk. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we didn't cover everything, but anyway. Um, and oh, thank you. Oh, yes. From Mongolia. Yes. I, you know, I'm going to pronounce it wrong. Be saying Baina. Yes, hello. That's and um, and if if you have any questions, please post the questions and um, we'll see if we can, in the very short time that we have, um, answer them or we will answer them in other ways. You can you can also uh, ask Liddy or connect with me. And um, I have some rituals coming up that uh, I would really invite you to to check out tomorrow there is a, a new moon ritual mm -hmm. um, ceremony. It's a new moon's uh, solar eclipse in Gemini. It's a very powerful portal that's opening up. And um, you can check that out um, on the Facebook page and go to the link. There is um, also, what's coming up? Oh yes, the Litha or summer solstice is coming up mm -hmm. and um, it's a it's a very powerful moment of the longest day of the year, but it's also the time when we, in the goddess tradition that I work with, we connect with the element of water, and we connect with the oak tree. Very powerful symbols, and um, so and then there is the full moon, full strawberry moon that's coming up around June twenty fourth. So check that out at my rituals page and um, uh, on my website and hope to see you all there. So and thank if, you so much. And yes. if you people that is watching have not done a, a ceremony with Yukiko, you are missing out. So <laughs> go ahead and connect it to her beautiful ceremonies and mm. Yukiko Thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you for this beautiful conversation. Um, I love you very, very much. And oh. thank you for everybody that's watching or will be watching later on. Yeah. Thank you so much, Liddy. And thank you again for jumping in. And again, you know, there's other things that, that I want to talk about, such as land, land energy, you know, the different energies of of the, the the places around the world um also you know the the, the work that you've done uh the humanitarian works that you've done uh, mm. traveling around the world and so another time Yay. another time yes but thank you here. again thank you so so much and thank you thank you everybody for joining in um 
and we shall see you next week. Next week, uh, we'll be with Marissa. Marissa is, is a conscious uh, embodiment, conscious dance um, leader from Argentina. Mm -hmm. And she is was one of the key people who brought conscious dance into South America. And a really, really beautiful, wonderful friend. So I hope you can join us again. All right. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.